Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Prolock. This is their part number ELK-110. Dash KA. So it's an ELK 110 that happens to be keyed alike. This is a keyed um, lock hasp or a padlock hasp, except that it doesn't take a padlock. It incorporates its own key. Very common piece of equipment that you can use to provide a very standard level of security over a door. Um, you might use it. I don't know that I would use it for anything of value. I wouldn't use it on a job site to lock up hardware or tools. Um, this would be an application where you don't expect anyone to be able to have access to the cylinder uh, that has any knowledge of locks. And it's a great lock and it works superbly. What I mean to say is this is a very low-tech piece of lock equipment that's here. And I don't make a living as a locksmith and I am the furthest thing from talented when it comes to shimming or opening up locks when you don't have the operating key, but this probably wouldn't prevent me from getting it open. Um, you know, a client walks in with a lock like this, you can generally get the lock at least open. That's because this is a disc tumbler lock or a wafer tumbler lock, it might be called. I would call it a disc tumbler. Uh, wafer makes me think of a different type of lock. Um, same technology that's going to be used on a cabinet drawer. Uh, kind of application, except that in this case, there are only three tumblers inside of there. A typical wafer is going to have maybe five or even more. Ignition, you know, older style ignition keys can have, you know, ten wafers. There are European variations of locks that have lots of wafers, which means, you know, it's just going to be less difficult, to, uh, less or I should say uh, more of a challenge to open them without the operating key. So that's the operating key. This is a KA. That's 671. That's a reference to the key number. I would say that that's what's called a blind code. I don't believe there's anything on there that measures 671. It's just when it's a 671 key, that's the key that's used. And obviously all of the biddings on the key will be the same when it's a 671. Uh, so this is what it looks like in its package. Holding it upside down to simply show more of it, I, I suppose. Uh, here's what it looks like outside of the package. I'd probably want to use this sort of lock to keep something of low, you know, low security uh, locked up, and it would certainly be it certainly work uh, very elegantly for doing so. So this is what it looks like in the unlocked position. Get the concept of how that's going to work. To lock it, you're just going to rotate the handle. Now it's in the locked position. Okay, No way to get that out. Not without the key. Inserting the key and rotating it will allow you to turn that. Let's start over. It's in the locked position. I'm going to rotate the key fully. And I'm going to turn the handle as well. Then I can bring the key back to vertical where I can then remove it. So the key is removable in both the locked and unlocked position. Uh, this would be what's called the staple. And this is the hasp itself. Obviously for a flush installation where you've got the jam and the door on the same plane. You might use it, uh, I suppose you could get fancy if you had an inside corner. You might be able to put a bend on this. Not that I would recommend that you do that, but you could consider doing that I suppose. It's not recommended for it. This piece of steel with that chrome plating is certainly going to fatigue. So I don't know that I would go out of my way to recommend that sort of maneuver. Let's take some dimensional properties. The key lock or staple itself, that footprint's going to be inch and five-eighths by inch and five-eighths. Overall projection, about an inch and three-eighths. The overall length of the hasp from the pin to the end about four and a half from the pin to the end of the mounting portion about an inch and nine sixteenths you can see that you've got four holes that are countersunk there okay it's going to include fasteners just typical oval head screws total of eight you can certainly see why eight is the magic number 
Okay. So regardless of how many of these you buy, when you buy the KA, they're going to be key to like. Um, that's, you know, people want that uh, in lots of instances. There are also times when people specifically do not want that because you want them keyed differently. And let's take a look and see if we can get anything here keyed differently. Placing this back kind of on its packaging. Now, there is a link below this video to the installation instructions, which are very handy, which will allow us to review uh, really what is in effect the back of the packaging. Okay, let's take a look at that and see if that's the case. Hmm, okay, yep, that's exactly the back of the packaging. What we're saying is to place the lock body and screw just basically on the door and eyeball it. Uh, you know, position your staple where it's going to go, your hasp. Make sure that it all works and lines up. Mark some holes, mark all your holes in fact. Place and screw the edge of the hinge plate on the door or the lid as shown. Make sure that the parts do not rub against each other when opening and closing the door lid. You don't have a lot of clearance inside of there so you'll you'll get that placed. Maybe have someone help you hold one piece as you make sure that it works and then mark your holes. There's also below this video information on the extended description, gives the dimensional properties, works on in opening doors. You can certainly use it on in swing or out swinging doors. You were to fold that hasp back, your door will certainly open in. The issue with it being on an in swing door is you, you generally don't have a flush installation on an in swinging door, right? You generally would have that only on an out swinging door. So provided you can get the hasp and the staple to you know, line up, in swing or out swing doesn't really matter. I would say that this would be for out swing doors generally. Um, you, right, I mean, that's what I would say. Left or right hand, sure. You can obviously install this left hand or right hand, whichever you like. Now, possibly more valuably is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the ProLock products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Now, when you're in that full product catalog, you're immediately going to be greeted by lots of locksmithing tools, and that indeed is what ProLock is known for. Um, they do also have the security hardware, or entry armor is what it's called. Uh, it was an entry armor catalog, and there is indeed a version of this catalog where it's called ProLock Entry Armor Catalog that will give you just this security hardware in a uh, separate document. It's an older file, I think is the bottom line. We retain those older files. As you search that document, the current catalog of which there's about five dozen pages, you might just want to perform a find function, control F for ELK and then you'll find the page where you'll find ELKs. So the ELK 110 is certainly listed there. Gives you an idea of the product as it relates to its sister products. They do have a model of this that is simply um, a smaller for format. They indicate for the ELK 110 that it can be purchased key to like or key differently. If it was going to be keyed differently, that part number would become KD for keyed differently. But that link to the catalog is handy because it will show you this other equipment that you might not have as easily as, as this found in the past. And the common items that we're going to sell on those pages from their entry armor catalog would be the ELK 110, the 111, the EPL 102, the EPL 105, the EPL 106 and 8, the EPL 110. Everything on that page is very common, and the things on the second page are mostly common, the sliding door material, but we've sold all of it. Um, so a handy resource. If you're looking for this, you're probably not looking for locksmithing tools. However, if you've backed into this catalog as a result of looking for locksmithing tools, did you know they also have some security hardware? So speaking quickly about their locksmithing equipment, I can tell you that we have used quite 
um, intimately their blue punch. Every lock shop has some variant of their blue punch. Um, our current blue punch is pushing 20 years old. We've done a couple, we've done to date two services on it and I've changed the springs twice and it's cut tens of thousands of keys. Uh, so a great caliber item that's there. Um, their lock picks, their lock preparation installation aids are all good pieces of equipment from Pro ProLock. Under their entry armor catalog, I should state that they have a full line of door reinforcing wraparound plates. Um, those are also available in that catalog. If you have any questions on the ProLock ELK-110 and a KA or even a KD variation or any other uh, ProLock product, please feel free to reach out to us. One last thing, it was indicated on that catalog C as the finish. That's going to mean chrome. There were no other finishes listed, so this polished chrome over steel would be what you'd get. Any questions on this or any other ProLock product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.